There are certain items that thrift stores just seem to have an abundance of. Wicker baskets, corporate swag t-shirts that you get for running a 5k or going to a company picnic, and a certified metric ton of cheesy wooden signs. We're talking the gathers, we're talking the too blessed to be stressed, and America's darling, live, laugh, love. So in the spirit of taking discarded items and giving them new life, we're gonna grab some of these signs from the thrift store today, and we're gonna turn them into things that we would wanna hang in our own homes. So without further ado, onward to the thrift store. Also, I'm Kathleen, thanks for being here. Okay, let's go. Bye, Skelly. Say bye. Bye. Oh yeah. Come to mama. This is under $10, we're getting it. Yes. This is what I'm freaking talking about. My first victim. A Big Lots classic. This might need to perish as well. This has the feeling some sort of quilting supplies. It's like a tabletop measuring device. You tell me. I know you're smart. Oh my god. Is this a photograph? I think that's the most cursed thing I've I have yet to see. Ever, actually. Look at all these guys. I would not dare paint over these. What are you? Oh, just the cat's meow village, obviously. You've got a pineapple up front. What are you? The owl and the pussy cat? Yeah, that tracks. You cannot mean to tell me that there's a sword in here. I knew it was too good to be true. Hi, let's talk about the damage that was done at the thrift store yesterday. Our soon to be canvases. Okay, well first I got some stationery featuring pretty ladies. And then I got these pretty painted ladies. Ugh. Hold on. This will be some sort of fashion illustration painting. And this will be turned into a fake book. This was $15 originally. The nerve. Before we get too far into anything else, we need to prep these bad boys so we can actually paint on them. I'm thinking that's just gonna include slathering them with some gesso. This one might need to be sanded down a little bit because of course it has a nice fake antique crackle texture on here. Because why wouldn't it? Morning. We're gonna go get coffee, okay? Do you want coffee? You're more of a tea guy. Ugh, boring. I like coming to this coffee shop because this house, sometimes, if we're lucky, has two little dogs that run around the yard and bark at people. Today, we're not so lucky. It's a new day and I feel brave enough to confess something. Last night, I had a case of the I don't want us. For this project, for this video, I had a timeline set out and last night I was supposed to not only prime my paintings but also get, get started on my paintings. I felt daunted. The prospect of starting a new creative project, putting the pen to actual paper, as it were, sometimes can be a bit overwhelming. And a lot of times when that happens, I like to just give it give it a sleep. Sleep on it, jump on it right in the morning when you're feeling bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Speaking of, where's my coffee? I can't step very far in this skirt. A lot of shuffling happening around these parts. And guess what? It worked. I'm ready. My brain, most importantly, is ready. And if all else fails, one way that I like to jumpstart my brain freeze situation when it comes to creative projects is to learn more about the technique that I'm gonna use. So I really feel prepared and like I've got tools in my tool belt while I'm actually doing the thing. In this case, that would be 
acrylic painting. And luckily we have a brand new sponsor for today's video that can help us with exactly that. Thank you, Skillshare. If you aren't familiar, Skillshare is a huge online learning community for creatives, whether you're a beginner or you do it for your job with literally thousands of classes led by industry professionals. And if you're struggling to get started on that next project, kind of like I am, Skillshare now has learning paths, which are collections of classes that build upon one another and really give you a well-rounded view of whatever you're trying to learn. For example, this explore acrylic painting as an absolute beginner learning path may be a great place to start if you'd like to tackle something like our painting project this week. So if you'd like to try it out, the first 500 people that use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare so that we can all get started together. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Cheers to you. And let's get started with the actual ding dang painting, okay? Let's go. nice and gessoed. It did take about uh, four coats of gesso each, mostly because this isn't good gesso. So I have a rough idea of what I'm going to paint slash make, let me tell you, and I'm gonna need your help. My two favorite things to draw, people, specifically ladies, and flowers. So I'd love to draw some sort of feminine form fashion illustration. I'm imagining something pretty simplistic and expressive, maybe just like a shoulder and a neck and you can see some of her flower dress. And I think I want her to be sitting in a chair, like a cool mid-century chair. So I feel pretty good about that. Now for this one, this is where I'm a little bit stumped. I got this one to be a fake book because recently I was watching a painting video from my pal Chris, AKA Little Tiny Egg, who is an amazing, artist, painter, cool person in general, and if you're not subscribed or follow on Instagram, do that, you won't be sorry. She did this exact thing. She thrifted ugly signs from the thrift store and turned them into fake books. If you wanna watch that video, I will link it down below. She killed it. I was thinking I would do the cover of one of my favorite books or maybe a favorite author. Specifically, I wanted to do the original The Stand cover by Stephen King. This cover is just so goofy, y'all. It's not my favorite Stephen King book, but I do consider Stephen King like my coming of age author. I think the Gunslinger slash Dark Tower series is my favorite. And if you have a favorite Stephen King book, let me know down below. These days, the writing style isn't my favorite, but it was a great jumping off point for my young horror fantasy filled mind. But then I was like, do I want to do that? Or do I want to do a flower packet, a flower seed packet? One of these. I think that would be so cute for spring. So I'm going to put it up on Instagram as a poll, see what people like. Will I take their answers as gospel? Probably not, but it, it will help inform my final decision. <laughs> and if you'd like to be included in these kinds of polls in the future, come follow me on Instagram. It's fun over there. I mean, it's fun here. It's fun both places. While I pull that, let's get started on our fashion painting. Ooh. I'm gonna just sit myself right down on the floor and let's sketch a couple figures before we actually start painting on canvas and making any big decisions we might regret. Here comes a peaceful time lapse, just for you. That's not a pen, that's lip liner. <laughs> I like this sketch, this sketch. So I took pictures of them and then I cropped them how I would want to crop them in the final. Cropped out the head, cropped out some of the legs, so it's a little more graphic. I like this 
drawing, just as a drawing more. But I think this is the composition we're gonna go for. So let's start slapping a sketch on our panel and get to painting. That's for you. That was also for you. moment happening here. This is <laughs> like a lip stain that you peel off. I actually really like it. Was that gross? Did you want to see that? The top one hurts because sometimes it gets caught in my mustache. Okay, let's go. Oh, I forgot my microphone. Enjoy the nature sounds. So we got the first kind of coat down for our fashion portrait painting and it's still kind of in its ugly face I would say. Uh, we're gonna switch gears to our smaller painting and then finish up our fashion guy later today. So on Instagram I ran that poll if we should do the flower packet or the stand cover. For some reason I was almost certain that y'all were gonna pick flower packet. But guess who won? These ding-dongs. So that's what we're gonna do today. That sounds really fun. Multiple times today already, Kashi has like booped me to tell me he has to go outside. And, and he is prone to diarrhea. So I'm like, yeah, let's go. Every time, I think he just wants to come hang out outside because it's nice out here. I don't blame the guy. chugging away at this book cover look how cute it is you know i was gonna do like a crazy hyper color color scheme but then i was like what if i just did what was on the real cover i still need to add the text one idea was maybe we add the hyper color here and use like bright pink i don't know <laughs> i think we're gonna go for the hot pink make it a little something spicy you know mm, i feel like i'm gonna regret this like i always say regret is the spice of life here it goes Oh yeah, this is the right choice. <laughs> Seeing art supplies strewn about my desk, I think is one of my favorite sights. And for some reason, an art mess doesn't stress me out like a non-art mess does. <laughs> Anyways, I think our book is in good shape. I painted along the edges to make it look like an actual book. I think it's so fun. I still need to put, you know, the author name at the bottom. We're getting there. So while we let that dry, I think we should finish up this lady. And looking at her with fresh eyes, there's a couple things I want to change. One, this one's supposed to be like super loose, very gestural, and it's just too tight, too tight of a drawing. I was being too precious about the lines, and you might be like, what? That looks like a pretty messy drawing. I want it messier. I want it more emotive. So I'm going to go back in, add a little more wobbliness, and use a more opaque paint this time, I think I also want to desaturate this blue to be closer to this kind of periwinkle color. And then maybe change this white background as well. Even if it's just like a cream, that should be pretty quick. And I have a sushi date to get to. So chop, chop, we gotta go. I love this brush. It's so perfect for just loading up with tons of paint, tons of ink and just exactly like that. I like this one too. 
I just like a round brush. And a lot of these brushes I've had since college. And as like, you know, a broke college student, buying all the art supplies needed definitely hurt the bank a little bit. But hey, I still have them, I still use them. Can't say that about your textbooks, can ya? Well, what'd you think? If you're like me and you have a hard time finding home decor that you actually like, that aligns with your interests, this is the perfect craft. If you don't consider yourself an artist, the book idea is great because you have something to kind of replicate. It would be a great gift for somebody. Big shout out to Chris again for sharing this idea in her video. And if you choose to overhaul some cheesy wooden signs at the thrift store, let me know. Feel free to tag me on Instagram, at Kathleen Illustrated, comment here. And speaking of commenting, I'm curious if you were to make a wooden book for yourself or even a fake book, what would you want to do? My other thought was to do like some of my favorite manga covers. Can you imagine a little Tokyo Mew Mew in wooden book form? This week we made a lot. We exercised our creative muscles. Next week I think we're gonna get our lives together. We're gonna do some organizing, some decluttering, finally get those clothes for my closet sale up for sale. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and speaking of videos, thank you so much for all of the love and excitement about last week's video. It's something I've been wanting to do for a really long time and I'm so glad it finally came to fruition. So if you haven't watched the Night at the Thrift Store video yet, highly recommend. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. I love ya, hope you have a very stinky week and goodbye.